Hey guys, if you are trying to buy a house or maybe remortgage your property or even borrow money to buy a car, for example, the banks use your credit score to assess your credit worthiness. If you're someone who's got a good credit score, you are more likely to borrow money a lot cheaply, meaning that over the term of your borrowing, it will cost you a lot less to borrow money to do what you want to do. Today, I wanna to look at 15 different tips to help you increase your credit score to that excellent score of 999. The tips I'm gonna to share today are tips that helped me increase my credit score from the low 400s to 999 and remain there consistently, okay? So if you're really enjoying the sound of today's video, we'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Now I've written the tips on my phone and I'm gonna be walking through them one at a time. So let's get, get into them just now. The very first tip is to check your credits, credit report regularly, okay? Now there are three main credit referencing agencies that you need to check your credit report with in order to make sure that what they are sharing across all the different platforms are effectively the same. Those ag agencies are Experian, uh, Equifax, and TransUnion. Now, one tool that really helped me on that journey of increasing my credit score to 999 is a tool called Check My File. Now, Check My File helps you to, to get your free credit report across all those three referencing agencies that I mentioned all in just one place. That way, you can see a complete picture, you know, rather than just going to each one and trying to figure out what they're saying exactly. Now, I just wanna have a quick peek at what that looks like at Check My File uh, here up on the screens for you guys to check it out. It says here, Check My File, see everything uh, in one place, uh, see your credit report for free, uh, and you can try it for free for 30 days. And people typically do that, they sign up for 30 days, and then they cancel it. Otherwise, it will cost $14.99 after that per month. So I'll put a link below to check my file and above. As someone who's used it, I can tell you it's brilliant. So definitely check it out and use our link. I should mention full transparency. The link you're gonna use is what they call an affiliate link, which means we'll get a small commission if you do use our link, okay? But it doesn't cost you anything to use it. And as I said, you get your report for free in the 30 days, okay? Tip number two is to fix any errors promptly. Now, it might be hard to actually believe that credit referencing agencies get things wrong. I know this because I had the shock of my life once when I checked my credit report and saw that there was a county court judgment, what's known as a CCJ. It's not the prettiest thing to find on your credit report. And of course, it was in error. So I had a real panic because contacting these agencies and trying to get all of them to change what they've written about you incorrectly takes a lot of effort. And there was also the emotional turmoil related to that. Of course, they, they checked and it was incorrect and they removed it, but it took some time, which is why I say getting things like your credit report is absolutely necessary because then you're able to get a full picture. And also, because it takes a while to get rid of any errors that you might find, um, having access to the three different agencies will make sure that one person is not saying one thing and another person is not saying something else is entirely different. So that's very important. Oh, I should mention, if you've been a victim of identity fraud in the past, uh, with your credit report, you can get a password put on there so that if anybody tried to basically, you know, do any checks on your name, run any credit uh, checks on your name without you knowing, they would have to call you first to get that password before they can then um, run that credit check. So I had to do that because I'm someone who in the past had uh, a, a experience of identity theft. So uh, that helped me get that sorted and I put a password on my credit report. <clears throat> All right, tip number three is to register to vote on the electoral road. Role. Now, registering to vote on the electoral roll gives you an immediate boost to your credit score because it acts as a proof of address, okay? Now, one thing I'd say definitely is to please make sure that all aspects of you registering are correct. So, for example, have your full name. So, for example, I'm, I'm known as Ken. I wouldn't put just Ken on there, even though my actual full first name is Kenneth. So, I would put Kenneth on my uh, my registration on the electoral roll. If you've got any middle names as well, definitely make sure that you are adding those middle names and obviously making sure that your past addresses and what and what have you are all very correct as well. 
Tip four is to pay your bills on time. Now, paying your bills on time in full and on time consistently is one of the biggest contributors to getting yourself a higher credit score. It demonstrates that you are able to manage the inflow of money and the outflow of money out of your life, which is very good. The top tip here is to make sure you automate all your payments, whether you're doing that via a direct debit or via a standing order. Essentially make sure that the things you're paying for, you've committed to pay for, are going out properly every single month. One thing we do, I do it every morning, is I log into my online banking in the morning and I just check just to make sure I'm not in any, in any overdrafts or that any payments have failed. That kind of thing is a good tip to do, a good thing to do every single day. Tip number five is to reduce your credit balance and utilization. Now, the goal here is to understand what's known as your credit utilization, which is essentially the proportion of your um, allowed credit limit that you are utilizing, that you are using. Let's say, for example, that you've got two credit cards. One's got a 5K limit and the other's got a 5K limit. If you've used 3,000 pounds of each of those cards, then you've, effect you've effectively got a 60% utilization rate, so 3,000 divided by 5,000 as a percentage, right? But credit utilization is also looked at across the two different cards in totality, yeah? So the top tip here is to make sure that your credit utilization is at 30% or below. So if you've got a 10K credit limit, for example, you want to try and make sure that you're not keeping the maximum balance you've got on that, on that card to around 3,000 or below thereabouts. So doing that demonstrates responsible use of credit and helps to boost your credit score. Tip six is to use a mix of different credit types. I find it super ironic that you have to take on credit to actually uh, show that you are good at managing your debt, right? Okay, so it's much better to actually have a mortgage, a credit card, and other types of loans, and managing them all uh, properly will demonstrate effectively a positive influence on your credit score. And, but as we always say uh, on our channel, do make sure that you obviously take on what you can manage responsibly on this journey towards boosting your credit score. Tip seven is to avoid opening multiple accounts rapidly. Each time you open an account, it leaves a mark on your credit report. So if you open many accounts in a short space of time, it could be viewed as risky behavior and could actually adversely, effectively harm your credit score. So you don't want to be doing that. All right, tip eight is to monitor any financial associations. I hate to break this to you, but the people you're associate, associated with influence your credit score. So it could be your partner, it could be your ex-partner, it could even be your son or daughter, it could be a parent, for example. All these connections in some way have an influence. Um, we've had situations where, a, in a couple situation, the husband has been, you know, misusing his, you know, credit reports and maybe keeping things from the, the wife, and the wife is being diligent and managing, you know, in the personal finances of the household. But because the husband's done something a bit naughty, it's affecting you know, her credit report as well. So these things can happen. In fact, I'd like to hear from you guys in the comments if this is something you've experienced and it can, it's, it's, it's something you can relate to. Let us know in the comments. Now, if you're currently associated with someone who is poor at managing their finances and you want to disassociate from them, you can do this by completing what's known as a notice of disassociation. It's a form that's available at each of the credit referencing agencies. So Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, you can go and complete those forms for free and get it done. But like I say, again, the credit report that I mentioned earlier, you know, the, the, the platform, um, uh, Check My File, is a good place to begin that journey of actually seeing the full picture of actually what's going on with your credit report. Now, I should mention that this process though can take a while, you know, trying to disassociate yourself can take a while to go through. So again, having that credit report means you can keep track of what on earth's going on. Now, tip nine is to keep old accounts open. Now, you may have different bank accounts, different credit uh, accounts, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, perhaps I should just close a bunch of them down. down. Now, uh, the thing to mention is that the length of your credit history actually matters. So we'd suggest keeping your oldest accounts open. Even if you have a zero balance on them, try and keep those open because those actually demonstrate a stronger credit history, which 
you know, in, in a tight end to the point, effectively helps to increase your credit score. Tip 10 is to use a credit card responsibly. Now, if you're someone in there, it's, it can feel quite nerve wracking to think of getting a credit card, for example, but credit cards have their pros and cons. In fact, we've made a detailed video, which I'll link to below and above. But some of those pros include the fact that there's a section 75 consumer credit tax, which helps uh, offers you protection when you make purchases of goods and services, and if they're not delivered in the way that they're meant to be delivered, you can claim, uh, you can try and get your money back, which is what that's there to help you to do, a protection in law. But in addition to um, that protection, credit cards help for anyone who manages them responsibly, helps you to collect, get cash back, for example, or collect, um, you know, Avios points, uh, that sort of thing. We've made videos on this sort of thing, on how we use those Avios points and companion vouchers, for example, to uh, save money on travel. I'll link to a video below and above for you to check out if that's of interest to you. But effectively, what we're saying here is that for you to take on a credit card and pay it off monthly, it demonstrates good stewardship for money. So, but the key things to make sure, as I say here, make sure the credit card's paid off monthly. Uh, we have a direct debit set up for our credit cards so that we're paying them off in full every single month, but we're using them to collect these various points, as I mentioned. Now, note that if you can't get a regular credit card, you can get a credit builder card, which uh, is specifically designed for those with lower credit scores. So those are also worth checking out. Tip 11 is to limit credit applications. Every time you make a credit application, it results in a hard inquiry on your credit report. Now, to improve your credit score, you should limit any unnecessary applications to avoid any negative impact. It's especially important to do this in the six months building up to when you may want to make a mortgage application, for example. You want to try and keep that, that, you know, that picture completely clean uh, of unnecessary applications. Tip 12 is to become an authorized user. If you have a trusted family member or a friend with a good credit score, or history, you can ask them to be added as an authorized user on their account. Now, doing this can help to boost your credit score. However, uh, note that this can actually work in both ways uh, as well. So if the person who, who authorizes you as a user misuses or misses payments or misuses their card, this may also affect you adversely. So definitely make sure you are aware of that. Tip 13 is to negotiate with creditors. Now, if you're struggling with payments, which is very common in this season with the uh, you know, a high cost of living for a lot of people, it's easy to bury your head in the sand you know, uh, 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 and think the damage is already done. In fact, I had a friend of mine who had, um, who basically shared with me that you know, over, over time, you know, they'd in, in the past made mistakes with credit cards, but because that's happened, they're struggling to kind of find a way of um, getting back on track, you know, which a lot of people can relate to because we all make mistakes. Now, the thing to note is that if you're currently struggling with payments, the best thing you can do, even if you might have that past history, the best thing you can do is to contact your creditor, uh, the person you owe, and discuss a manageable repayment plan. Doing this, I know, could lead to them potentially willing not to report any missed payments that you may have on your credit report. But it begins with having that communication as a good starting point. Tip 14 is to use eligibility checkers for a soft search. Now, if you're considering borrowing money from a credit card company or a loan company, we'd suggest using a comparison website for uh, the range of options available to you. Now, these have th these uh, comparison websites have uh, eligibility checkers that do a soft search rather than a hard search, okay? Now, although this might not tell you that you are immediately uh, guaranteed to get the loan that you're applying for, it may actually give you pre-approval, which is a good enough picture. Now, doing these soft checks via an eligibility check, as I mentioned earlier, helps you to avoid the issue that uh, too many applications may, uh, may result in a hard search on your report, which you don't really want, okay? And then final, it's tip 15, which is to be patient and persistent. Now, living with a bad credit score can be frustrating, particularly if you are trying, you're doing various things to try to improve your credit score, but you are not really seeing any improvements. Now, the first thing to know is that this whole thing I've just mentioned with improving your credit score is a gradual process. 
For some people, the tips I've mentioned will result in a immediate result in say the next 30 days. For other people, it may take months for them to see those results. The key thing is to take things slowly. Stay positive because additional worry about things related to your credit report and credit file or even ignoring it will not result in the result that you want. But one thing I'd mention is that combining various points I've mentioned in these 15 tips and doing them together, which are all small little steps to take, will invariably lead to your credit score heading in the right direction, which is upwards, and over time improving the overall financial health of your finances more generally. Okay, so I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, the journey to becoming, uh, having a high credit score over time is worth it, although it might take a bit of work. So do stay persistent and stay patient on this journey. Don't forget to check out that tool I mentioned earlier, check my file. As someone who's used it personally, it has really made a huge difference. As I mentioned earlier, it's available for free and will cost you nothing to use it to get your credit report and get access to those three credit referencing agency reports for those first 30 days. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. If you've got any questions related to your credit report or your credit score, please drop in the comments and let us know. I'll be in there once this video is published and over time answering all your questions. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Uh, and as always, in all things, be thankful and seek joy. All right, take care and bye for now.